Howdy friends, KC here, and I hope you are ready for a little bit of badassery because I am going to show you my baby, <laughs> my AR. Um, I told you guys I've been working on something recently, and this is what it is. Um, got a lot of the stuff done on it that I want to, and uh, I figured you guys would enjoy seeing it, and I would have fun showing it off. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, I'm going to go through all of the upgrades that I've put on it, and um, maybe just talk about them a little bit, and show you what this girl has on her AR. <laughs> um, first thing that I'm going to address here is, uh, it's a Smith & Wesson MMP, as you can see. <clears throat> um, and, of course, this is kind of awkward to do on camera here. <laughs> I was practicing before I started. Um, however, make sure everything is clear for those of you that don't trust me in my own home. <laughs> <clears throat> and keep moving. Um, <clears throat> First thing I'm going to talk about so I can get this out of the way is uh, the sling. And uh, I've put, this is a Magpul MS3. Um, and the cool thing about it is that it is convertible from two point to uh, one point. Let me fix that a little bit there. Um, you know, you just swing it over and clips right on. Um, and is completely removable from there as well. Um, one thing I do have to say is uh, I do wish that I had got this in black um, simply because it doesn't completely uh, match the flat dark earth um, very well and I just think that black probably would have looked a little bit better. So <clears throat> um, <coughs> you have to excuse me I, <clears throat> if I sound a little sick still. Um, <clears throat> still just getting over that flu a little bit. Um, but anyways, uh, one thing that I added having to do with the sling is I uh, added the, this is a Magpul ASAP, and I think it stands for ambidextrous sling attachment or something. Basically what that allows is for, uh, you can switch from your dominant uh, shooting hand to your weak shooting hand uh, in a pinch if you need to. Um, everything swings over really nicely, especially if you're wearing that one point sling. Um, another thing to note, um, the way that the um, clips here are on the MS3, um, they have a little safety lock um, to keep you from opening it all the way. Just pop that little button there and you are good to go. It locks on. Um, the way that these kind of lobster claw clips are, one thing I have noticed is um, if you look here on the front sling strap. Um, those clips kind of tend to, there's like a rubbery um, material on here and uh, those, those clips, if you carry it around, you know, any at all anyways, um, they're going to kind of dig in and chew into that rubbery stuff. Um, which, you know, that's just part of wear and tear and the use of the weapon, if you ask me. Uh, but just something to note if you're interested. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, Starting from the back, um, pretty much all the furniture on here is Magpul uh, MOE, and this is the um, Magpul collapsible MOE stock, um, accompanied by the Magpul uh, MOE pistol grip here. And uh, one thing that I did with mine is here on almost every pistol grip for an AR, you're going to have a recess in here. And you can put whatever you want to in these things, um, bullets, batteries for your uh, optics, whatever, makes no difference. Uh, what I chose to do is I bought uh, one of these little cleaning kits, it's a pistol grip cleaning kit from Otis, and <clears throat> if you look down, I'm not going to pull it out because it's tucked in there <laughs> just so, um, but it has a, uh, you know, it's like the aircraft uh, wire uh, bore cleaner, it has all the brushes and attachments and T-handle, all that good stuff. Um, fits right in there. It's a complete cleaning kit. Boom, right in the handle of your uh, your, your rifle. So, um, if you're interested in getting one of these, I will tell you that um, if you are working with the Magpul pistol grip, you're going to have to do a little bit of customizing to get this to actually fit in there. Um, what I had to do is I had to shave off a little bit of the top here. Um, 
I shaved this area down a little bit on here as well um, because what happens is when you put it in there and this goes down uh, this is too wide to, to fit on both ends so I also had to do a little bit of customizing on this to get it to actually snap down in there uh, so just uh, just something to note if you are interested in doing that it doesn't take a lot of work but just you know get creative and you can make it fit all right, moving along. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I did also is uh, I did a color fill on the uh, roll stamps here for Fire and Safe because, <laughs> you know, you start getting old like me and you, <laughs> you, you can't see anything anymore. <laughs> so I wanted to make those a little bit more high visibility. Um, and I just used um, oil pastels to fill those in. And uh, I did it on both sides. <clears throat> Um, have the Magpul flip up uh, rear sight and uh, for the front sight I left the standard uh, kind of like an A2 style <clears throat> um, anyways this here adjust um, you can flip this down for your close combat um, sighting and for distance I uh, use the peep pole here now I am going to flip this bad boy over. <clears throat> um, as you can see, I have the Magpul um, P Mags, and I picked up. Oh, I've got about five of them right now. Um, I picked up these. Uh, these are made by Con. No, I'm sorry, made by Voodoo actually, <clears throat> and they fit pretty nicely in there. So. Um, uh, find a better way to attach them to uh, to my range bag or to, to a rig or something. <coughs> Excuse me again. <clears throat> um, I also added the Magpul Bad Lover. And <laughs> I gotta say, this has got to be one of the best um, investments, or the best upgrades that I've put on here. Um, it's something that... Uh, just mechanically, I felt like I needed to be doing this because um, it allows you to um, operate your charging handle and lock back your lock back your bolt carrier um, with just one hand. There's a little bug out here. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get rid of that bug. <laughs> I don't know what these things are, but they are all over the place. <clears throat> um, so, anyways, uh, basically, what this allows you to do is uh, you can pull your charging handle back. And all you have to do is lift your lever up here and uh, instead of having to depress it from this side. It's kind of a three-handed operation without this uh, bad lever. And man, I tell you, it is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, speaking of which, as you can probably see, I um, upgraded the charging handle too. Uh, this is the BCM Gunfighter. And uh, it's a Mod, mod 4, has the medium-sized uh, latch on here, which I'm also finding that to be kind of a lifesaver too, because uh, the standard one it comes with is um, less, <laughs> I don't know, it's just less than comfortable trying to get in there and reach it, and that little bit of extra leverage really makes a big difference if you ask me. Um, also, with your bed lever, you can um, release your bolt carrier with just a quick flick locks it right out. <clears throat> um, for optics, um, I don't have anything super special on here. Um, this is just happens to be a holographic, let me adjust you a bit here. This happens to be a holographic sight that I um, already had and it's not a bad one though. Um, I have uh, I can use get green. I don't know if I can do this here, guys. Get you a little visual, uh, but I will get a green holographic crosshair and or red. Put that sight back down. Really kind of there she goes. There it is. Um, and I can also adjust the style of crosshairs. Um, It just, uh, like I said, I can make it green or red. I'm not going to take the time to actually uh, maneuver that. 
um, but I can go from just a plain red dot to um, kind of like a circle, circle crosshair, um, plain, plain T crosshairs, um, and a couple other variants therein. But um, I would, of course, love to upgrade to um, some sort of a really nice optic at some point. Um, but those of you who are into this kind of stuff, you know that um, optics do not come cheap. <laughs> You're looking at uh, three, four, five, six hundred and more dollars for something real high quality like an Aimpoint or EOTech or whatever. Um, so moving right along here, um, I have also the Magpul uh, MOE handguard and I added the uh, angled foregrip here. Uh, I kind of have uh, mixed feelings about this so far. Um, I have to admit, I do like it better than uh, a, a regular vertical grip. Um, but one thing I don't like about it is, um, let's see if I can get this in here. A lot of times for stability when you shoot, um, you know, to put your hand right here like this, it's kind of hard to back you out. I don't think I can. I'm as far out. Um, but anyways, you just don't quite have the room to kind of sit yourself in there. You're kind of, it's almost like using um, a vertical foregrip, but you're not. You're just using the stability of your bone structure and your hands. Um, so it's difficult to do that with the angled foregrip on there. However, it does kind of have some other other advantages. Um, so jury's still out on that one. <laughs> um, these are also Magpul. Um, I can't remember what they're called. If I think it's CTX or something like that. I'm still kind of new to the game, the AR game here, guys. So I hope you'll forgive me <laughs> uh, for not remembering that one. Um, but these are basically just your basic rail covers. Um, each of these is its own individual piece, and you can kind of mix it and match it to kind of give it a cool camo look, or you can make it more consistent looking or whatnot. For uh, Illumination, uh, this is a Viking Tactics flashlight mount, and I currently have, uh, this, this is more my EDC uh, Streamlight, it's a PTL2, PT2L, um, and I just kind of, I'm, I'm looking for a much better flashlight, um, probably something that fits in there a little better to go on here, although I do love this flashlight. Um, you know, 180 lumens for that size, you just can't beat it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, there is a, uh, this is a 16 inch barrel. Uh, it is the, kind of getting to be standard uh, for ARs these days. Uh, chrome lined with the 1 and 9 twist. And your basic, uh, I believe this is just like a Smith & Wesson uh, flash suppressor. Nothing special about that either. Um, and that pretty much, uh, sums it up. Uh, one thing, uh, another word of advice I would like to offer is, um, <clears throat> as you can see here on my buffer tube and the castle nut here, got a little bit of, uh, some learning badges, <laughs> if you will. Um, this is the reason why you need to invest in a stock wrench. Um, I don't mind so much the, the markups on it uh, because it's a reminder that I learned something about this. Um, you know, so it's all cosmetic. Um, however, if you're not careful, uh, I did use a, a rag underneath the wrench when I initially did this, but sometimes it'll slip off. And you can really screw up your cross setting on your buffer tube here if you're not careful. Um, and mine almost did. Uh, it's it's not bad enough that it affects function at all. But uh, just just a, a word of advice and a word of caution if you're interested. So <clears throat> that pretty much sums it up. Um, I couldn't be happier with this build so far. And uh, I hope I covered everything. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, like I said, I am still learning about all this stuff. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. And if I don't know the answer, I'd be more than happy to learn it with you. <laughs> I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you on the flip side.